Hi everyone, welcome to Daisy Stalls. So in November of last year, you may remember that me and Enchantarium teamed up to create some fantasy creatures. And I ended up creating food in here, which was a mystical fantasy horse inspired by the season of fall as well as Japanese culture. I really did enjoy making her, so I decided to make one for the next season as well, which ended up being Lavina, the Russian winter spirit. Next up was spring, and I decided to make the spunky little foal Perry, which was inspired by Persian culture. So now we've come to the fourth and final season, summer, and choosing a country for this one was quite easy to be honest, we are doing Ukraine. As usual, I was doing quite a lot of research on the country and culture I had chosen, and I started reading about this goddess called Berahinya, which is apparently quite prevalent in Ukrainian mythology. She was described as an ancient female goddess who provided protection and fertility. After all the research, I came up with some concept art inspired by this specific goddess, and now I am ready to start crafting. But before that, I need to talk about a more pressing matter, which is Russia's full-scale war against Ukraine. I won't go into great detail about it in this video, as I know I have some younger viewers. However, the things that are happening in Ukraine at this moment are tragic and unacceptable, and I struggle to find the right words to describe the anger and sorrow I feel, and my prayers go out to all Ukrainians. In light of the situation, I will be donating all the money that this video makes in the first two weeks to the Come Back Alive Foundation, which is assisting Ukraine in defending their country. Links to that, as well as other informational pages, will be found in the description box if you'd like to learn more or donate yourself. Despite the dark times, I hope my art can bring a bit of light and show my support. So now let's begin creating it. I think it's only fitting that we use a draft horse as a base for this powerful nature goddess, so I'll be using the Collecta Perchron Mare as a base. I'll start by removing imperfections such as the writing on the belly as well as casting seams. When that's done, I'll begin to remove some bigger pieces from her. And to make this easier, I'll be softening up the plastic using a hot water bath. I take her out after a couple minutes and make sure to dry off the hot water so I don't burn my hands. Then I start by cutting off her tail. And I do the same thing with the mane as well. After a bit of work with the knife, she's free from her mane and tail, but the cut surface is still looking a bit rough. I thought I could maybe fix this by putting my Dremel to use to more efficiently sand it down, but I forgot how much I hate that thing. I'd rather not have tiny particles of plastic in my entire room, so I resorted to just use the knife and manually smooth the plastic down. Once I've shaved down the pointy parts, I'm going to start to re-sculpt the neck with two-part epoxy sculpt. Once the two components are thoroughly mixed together, I start to reconstruct the parts of the neck that I cut away, trying to make the transition from plastic to epoxy as smooth as possible. Usually, I find this type of re-sculpting pretty hard, but I think it went surprisingly well this time. However, since she's supposed to be a strong and powerful female goddess, I feel like both her character and her silhouette would benefit from having a slightly rounder stomach. So I mix up some more epoxy and try to convincingly give this girl a couple more pounds on her belly.
Now that I'm done with this first pass of epoxy, I'm going to let it cure overnight. And the next day, the clay is cured and ready to be sanded. I make sure to wear a proper filtration mask, as I'm pretty sure breathing in epoxy particles isn't good for you, and then I start smoothing down any lumps or imperfections. Once I am satisfied with my sanding work, I am going to take her outside and give her a couple sprays of my surface primer. The primer usually reveals a couple spots I need to fill in with epoxy or just smooth down with the sandpaper, so I go ahead and do that. Now, Berehinia is described as wearing tranquility on her face. However, the expression of this horse is pretty much the opposite of that, so I attempt to correct that by re-sculpting her eyes to be more droopy and chill. The sculpt work so far is complete, but I still need to add the ears and the tail, but these will need some wire supports, so I'm going to drill into these areas to make room for said wire. I'll be using epoxy to sculpt the ears, and though it's a pretty strong medium, it's still prone to breaking once it's sculpted in a sticking out way, as ears usually are, so that's why I'm reinforcing it with wire. I won't be sculpting the tail, but I still need this tail base, and you'll see why later. For sculpting ears, I usually first make a teardrop shape out of epoxy, then I kind of flatten it out with this silicone tool like this. Then I attach it around the wire base, and from there it's just fine tuning until I think it looks good. Once the ears are in place, I'm actually going to take out the Dremel again, but I'm doing it outside as I want to avoid that plastic dust flying everywhere. Using a thin cutting blade, I'm trying to make a delicate slit where the main will be. Now, I've actually heard that this carbon fiber blade that I'm using can break while you're using it, which freaked me out a bit, so I wore hand, body, and face protection, but I should probably switch them out for something else. I went slow and tried my best to keep the cut narrow and clean, and it turned out pretty good. While doing research about Berehinia, I read somewhere that she is often portrayed with legs looking like roots to symbolize stability and strength. I thought I would take that pretty literally, so I sculpted some roots that are growing upwards on her legs. I thought it was looking a bit bare once I was done with the epoxy, so I decided to add some smaller branches with this PBO porcelain liner. I also went ahead and added some veins to her face and on her belly. Now the final modification I'll be adding are some horns. I'll be forming these with wire and I'm following similar steps as I did with the ears to secure it. Now I'm not planning on these looking like any old horns. I actually want them to look like Ukraine's national plant, which is the Gelder Rose or Viburnum opulus. My mom, who knows a lot about plants, said that she had seen one growing not too far from our house, so I decided to go on a tiny expedition to find one as a live inspiration.
I was kind of stricken by how beautiful this plant is. The orangey red berries are so pretty. Anyway, now that I got my live inspiration in my room, I am going to start to form the horns using wire that is 0.4 and 0.3 millimeter thick. I suddenly remembered that when I made Fudin's horns, I sculpted some raised details on her face to make her horns more believable, so I went ahead and did that with this girl as well. Now to make the horns look more tree-like, I could go the same route as I did with Fudin, but her horns were quite thin, which suited her, but I don't think it will suit this girl, so I'm using some putty from the brand Tamiya to make them a bit thicker. Now, all her modifications are finally done, and it's time to move on to color. First, I gave her two layers of my primer, then I mixed together brown, white, red, and yellow until I got a nice, light, chestnutty color. Once I got my desired color, I make sure to thin out the paint a fair amount with water until it's about the consistency of whipping cream or a little bit thicker. Then I begin painting her layer by layer until she's completely opaque and also making sure that the paint is fully dry before I start on the next layer. It took about 6 layers give or take before she became opaque, and now that she is dry, I am going to spray her with Mr. Super Clear sealant to prepare her for pastels. And remember that sprays like Mr. Super Clear are very toxic, so it's important that you wear a proper vapor respirator. I wait about 30 minutes for it to dry, then I can start to apply pastels. I'll be using the same technique as the one I discovered while painting Gwendolyn and Paganip, which entails first covering the model with a layer of pastel that is one or two shades lighter than the existing base layer. Then without spraying a layer of sealant, I'm going to add a much darker layer of pastel, which is closer to the actual color I want on the horse, but still not going too dark too quickly. Then once those two layers of pastel are done, I am going to give it another layer of sealant and then just repeat the exact same steps until I have my desired color. I purposely really exaggerated the lighter parts of her face with light yellow as I know they will fade a lot with sealant. After the last layer of pastel, I gave her a couple good sprays to make sure they're sealed in. I also have a closer look to make sure I didn't miss any spots. This is her with about 4 layers of pastel and man, I'm in love. I think this is the best bay I've ever done actually. Now I'm going to get out the acrylic paints again and start to paint some details, starting with the roots on her legs. To make it look less 2D, I'm going to add some very watered out black, which will naturally seep into the crevices of the roots. Then to highlight the parts that stand out, I'll be using a light brown paint along with the dry brushing technique. And I use pretty much the same steps on the horns as well.
And to add some more nuance, I add a bit of green to the thinner branches. Now for eyes, Berehinia usually had green or blue eyes to my understanding, so I started by painting in the sclera, but you can't really see it because of my hair. Then I paint the base for the iris in black. I mixed up a grayish blue color with acrylics, then I added some pearly pan pastel to it and it became really pretty and I used that to paint over the iris. This gives a super subtle and calm looking blue eye, which I really like as I think painted blue eyes can look a bit crazy sometimes. Anyway, now that her painted details are done, I'm going to seal them in with a couple layers of sealant, then I'm going to move on to making her mane and tail. I'll be using acrylic yarn to make the hair, and if you want to know how to do this in depth, then I'll link the tutorial that I used in the description box. To make the hair look more natural, I'm going to add some nuances of color using pastel. I have to really rub the pigment into the fibers, then I clean it under water, and I repeat that a couple times until I got the color I want. Then I make the hair into wefts using regular wood glue. I made several different colors of hair, and I'll be using the brown and black ones for the feathers. Keeping with the roots as legs theme, I thought having big dark feathers could kind of resemble the base of a tree. I add the black hair on top and try my very best to blend it somewhat seamlessly into the plastic. Eventually, after a lot of tweaking and trimming, they turned out like this, and I'm actually pretty happy with them. She still needs her mane and tail though, so let's get to that. Again, just using regular wood glue, I attach the wefts around the tail base in a spiral fashion. I begin with a dark brown weft, then I go lighter and lighter as I approach the dock. I secure each weft with a clip for it to dry, then take a little tea break while waiting. Once all the hair is in place, it's looking nice and full, and I really like this ombre effect I achieved. But honestly, I feel like this horse would have to have a straightening iron on hand to keep her tail this straight, so to give it more of a wild look, I'm going to braid some sections of the tail. It looks pretty ugly, but I'm going to dampen these braids, then once completely dry, I'm going to undo them. This did give a very subtle wave to the hair, but I wanted something a bit more defined, so I ended up braiding it again, then lightly pressing it with a straightening iron, and that gave a much better result. This actually gave me the idea to braid some smaller wefts to decorate the tail with, I kind of cheated and made it simpler for myself by braiding separate pieces of hair, but I just glued it using regular wood glue underneath the tail, then I gathered them like this, and I think it turned out pretty cute. Now I'm going to glue in the wefts for the mane as well.
Once the glue is dry, I am going to split it into sections and braid it as well. Now choosing this flaxen color for the mane might seem a bit strange since I am putting it on a bay horse. However, I am actually basing it off this picture I saw of a gorgeous draft horse, which looked bay but it had a flaxen mane. I didn't actually know about this coat, but after a bit of research, I believe it's either called a red silver or a bay silver. I guess since this is a fantasy horse, it didn't really have to make sense either way, but I thought that was pretty cool. Plus the fact that Berehinia was sometimes depicted with blonde hair and blue eyes, so it fits. To set the waves, I pressed the braids with a hot knife that I heated up with a straining iron. And after undoing the braids, the waves turned out so nice. I'm super pleased with this. I'm just going to get rid of the straight ends using a eyebrow razor. After a bit of styling, it turned out like this and oh my goodness, I love this so much. Now to make the leaves for her horns, I'll be using this wrapping tissue that I painted using watercolors. I actually bought this leaf paper punch thing for making food in, but it didn't arrive in time. But luckily the shape of this leaf is pretty similar to the Gelder Rose, so it works. Of course, I also need to make those gorgeous red berries, and to do that, I glued some micro beads to some strands of sewing thread, then I painted them in a yellowish reddish color. I glue a few of those onto the horns, and later I also added some gloss varnish to them to really make them pop, and I really like how that looks. Beaded necklaces or namisto is a staple in traditional Ukrainian women's wear. You often see amber or coral beads being used, and I thought I would incorporate this on my horse, not really in the traditional necklace spot, but I think you see the inspiration regardless. Another part of traditional Ukrainian women's wear is a type of flower crown or vinok. You often see them being made out of colorful flowers, ribbons, and other items, and I felt inspired by this and decided to add something similar to my horse's tail. I felt like it was missing something, maybe some grass or straw? Coincidentally, we live right next to a field of barley, and I found a few types of smaller straw that I thought could work. I put them in the oven for about 20 minutes at 100 degrees Celsius to dry them out and kill any potential bugs. I used them to decorate her wreath and her mane, and I think it added some nice playfulness which it needed. Traditionally, you would also see Ukrainian girls wear braids a lot of the time, so I decided to add this as well, including some pretty pearls to add a bit of flair. As usual, I use Pinterest for a lot of my inspiration, and you can actually find folders for all of the seasonal horses on my Pinterest if you're interested. I was browsing around trying to find the last things to add to my horse, and this symbol caught my attention. I found out that this is actually the symbol of Berehinia, if I've understood right, and I decided to make a little embroidered pouch like I saw on the picture. I 
I tied it to one of her branches and I really like how that looks. As some last finishing touches, I add some moss and greenery to the roots on her legs. I also made this small bird out of clay and I painted it to look like a nightingale, which I've gathered is not the official national bird of Ukraine, but to the people it's kind of considered to be one of them if I've understood right. I glue the little bird to her back and with that, Berehinia is completed. Now, for her name, I thought about naming her Kalina, which is the Ukrainian word for Gelda Rose. However, I've been calling her Berehinia this whole time, and that's kind of what she is, so I think I'll go with that instead. Now, I started this series in high spirits after having made Fudin, which I really enjoyed, but being honest, making both Lavina and Perry kind of was a hassle and I didn't really like how they turned out. But I'm so happy with Berehinia, I'm really happy I could conclude this series with something I feel very proud of, so yeah, I'm very happy about that. I also want to extend a big thank you to all of you guys who have been watching and showing so much enthusiasm for this series. As I mentioned, some of the projects were a bit more tough and you guys really kept me going by being positive, so Thank you all so much for watching and supporting this series and this channel. To be honest, I'm feeling quite done with making fantasy horses for the near future, so I'm putting my bets on something more realistic for the next video, and I will see you whenever that is. Goodbye!